Hello, everyone, and thanks for listening to the Quality Hub, chatting with ISO experts. I'm your host, Xavier Francis, and we have two wonderful guests for you today. First, we have Suzanne Weber Smotko, Manager of Consulting Services here at Core. And next, we have Bruce Newman, Consultant here at Core Business Solutions. Great to have both of you with us today. Thanks, X. Glad to be here. Awesome. Today, we're going to be talking about how the aerospace industry and how its standard AS9100 and 9120 differs from ISO 9001. But first, let's hear from Suze and then Bruce about their experience and histories. Well, I guess I'll go first. So I've been in quality for a little over 30 years and 20 plus of those years I've been in aerospace, uh, both in a quality role and a supplier performance role. That's great. How about you, Bruce? Well, about the same, actually. Uh, Over 30 years experience in quality and quite a few years working with aerospace companies as uh, a consultant and a uh, customer. Well, this is great. And we're so glad to have both of you here again. You have been on before, but not together. And let's dive right into our first question. What are the primary objectives of AS9100-9120 versus ISO 9001? AS9100 is specifically designed for businesses in the aerospace industry. You know, 9001 can be used by any business or any industry in order to implement a quality management system. The AS9100 features additional requirements related to product safety, operational risks, and uh, different controls on your suppliers with flowing down certain terms and conditions. But I think we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Yes, I think we will. Both standards share a focus on quality management and continual improvement. And by meeting the requirements of either one of these standards, the intent is that businesses can demonstrate their commitment to providing high quality of products and services. The primary difference is focusing on the risks and a good product realization process from start to finish. Okay. From the time that you get a contract to the time that you ship your product and and beyond, mm-hmm. but there's a focus on having a really good, robust product realization process. Okay. Bruce, do you have anything to add to that? Well, just that the basic requirements are still there for repeatable processes, continual improvement, risk mitigation, conforming product, and customer satisfaction. It just goes a little deeper in the details. All right, so they are similar, but AS9100 has some additional requirements, like Suzanne said, and more, and we're looking at similarities with what Bruce said, repeatable processes. So, Bruce, what are the main differences between ISO 9001 and AS919120, and why do these differences matter for companies in the aerospace industry? Well, as you would expect, there is a huge focus on safety and ethics in the aerospace standards. Mm -hmm. It's called out in all the standards. Safety and ethics are important, obviously, in in any quality management system. But there's a more of a focus and and more of a requirement for pushing safety and ethics even out to your vendors with with aerospace. There are in there some uh, requirements to ensure the safety of workers and end users. All right. uh, In your product evaluation, design, and um, inspections and such. And it also calls out safety and ethical training as a requirement, not just for the organization, but for their vendors. Oh, okay. Um, Another difference is that uh, ISO 9001 focuses uh, root cause for um, problems and corrective actions in processes. Mm -hmm. AS 91 100 and 9120 both allow for uh, employee error as a potential root cause for um, corrective actions. And there's, a, there's, there's quite a bit more emphasis on traceability. Traceability is uh, basically left to the, um, if it's a customer requirement in 9001, then, then it's a requirement. Otherwise, you're allowed to exclude it. With uh, aerospace, traceability is a requirement. You have to keep track of uh, raw materials used in end products, uh, manpower associated with any assembly or manufacturing, and gauges, uh, gauge calibrated gauges um, that are used on the, during the process. Okay. Suze, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, I would add just to emphasize on what Bruce said is a lot of the things that 
I see with aerospace customers is that they don't realize that they must have that traceability to calibrated gauges and what product was measured with calibrated gauges. Okay. For example, if you have a nonconformance that has escaped your facility, you have to be able to determine what gauges were used mm -hmm. to measure that particular product and and have a containment process in place. Wow. So you you have to be able to do positively recall any product that was used with outdated calibration or something that had failed calibration. So that would have more documentation involved because you basically need to know where things are going as well. Yeah, right? and, and, and a good way to implement that is to, I recommend to customers is that they come up with a way to have operators record on their inspection documentation, what gauge, their ID or mm -hmm. serial number on that gauge be added to that inspection records. You know, having no traceability is worse than having to go through maybe 500 inspection yeah, records exactly. to find out what product exactly. was, was inspected with that. Additionally, the raw materials, right? You mm -hmm. have to have traceability to the incoming raw materials to what it was used on. So if you had a supplier issue, you can positively recall or identify what batches might have come into the supplier that went into your product. Okay. So that traceability needs to be there as well. Also, from a documentation point of view, I would say your purchasing terms and conditions are also different. Okay. Uh, there are specific terms and conditions that are required of AS9100 to be flowed down to your suppliers. Uh, just a, a couple examples, right of entry, counterfeit parts program, a change in product. Mm -hmm. The suppliers, you, you have certain controls on them. They have an obligation to notify you of certain things, right? If counterfeit parts are suspected, you should be flowing down uh, terms and conditions that they have a program, but not only that they have a program, but that they should notify you within 24 to 48 hours of any suspect counterfeit okay. parts. Okay. There, so there, there are specific terms and conditions that are specifically required to be flowed down to suppliers. That is different than ISO 9001. Well, this all seems understandable. I mean, as far as aerospace companies, they're dealing with products that are and they really require a high level of safety and functionality for end users. If something's not within spec or even counterfeit, it could cause a catastrophic failure, and that could lead to serious injury or death in some cases. But that's pretty understandable why we would need such traceability to know where that problem started at. So moving on, what specific requirements does AS9100, 9120 have that are not included in ISO 9001, and how do companies meet those requirements? Well, the primary focus of these uh, additional requirements or expectations is really back to what I said before, the product realization, mm -hmm. measurement, analysis, and improvement sections of AS9100. These sections, you'll find different demands placed on key aspects of critical to aerospace and defense. Okay. Employees and, uh, and vendors must be made aware of certain things, right? How mm -hmm. they contribute to product or, or service conformity, what their contribution is to product safety, importance of ethical behavior, uh, all of that should be part of your onboarding or at a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. What about you, Bruce? Yeah, I'll touch on a few of the more significant ones that are actually fairly um, specific to the AS standards. Configuration management is one. A lot of the companies we work with, uh, machine shops and assembly plants and stuff like that, configuration management's a big deal. You, you've got to build to the right design level. And quite often, Aircraft that's in, in the air for years. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, yeah, decades even. So there's plenty of design changes that have to be kept up with uh, for each iteration of the aircraft as it, as it evolves. So that's a big deal. Counterfeit parts management is another intriguing one because uh, the counterfeiters have become very uh, adept at what they do. And I've seen presentations by the Department of Defense where they showed two identical looking parts, but when you x ray them, they're electronical components uh, with, with internal PCBs, printed circuit boards that mm -hmm. you, um, you, you wouldn't be able to see. I mean, they're, they're sealed. Right. But right. under X-ray, you can see that one has really clear, uh, distinct um, tracing and electrical paths. Mm -hmm. And the other ones are, are, are very poorly done. Um, and you can see a, a, an easy opportunity there for short circuits and that kind of thing. But the longevity would be suspect. Which is, again, could lead to something terrible. 
you know, when, especially when you're dealing with defense or something that doesn't work. Yeah, well, you know, what they say, if you, when you're in an airplane, you can't pull over to the side and change the tire, right? <laughs> that's right. Or an engine or something that's not working. Yeah. And, and, and another thing, uh, as far as recall goes, a good recall process and good traceability is good is, is good for the business, not just to protect the customer, but also to protect your bottom line because recalls are expensive. So, so the better traceability you have, the better opportunity to limit a recall to specifically what you know is no good and not right. just go pulling in everything from the field. Last thing I'd say is foreign object control. That's probably something that could apply in a lot of industries outside of aerospace. Body armor. Yeah, body armor. Uh, when when body armor gets sewed together, you could, you know, there's all kind of like sewing needles and stuff that could get stuck inside there. So foreign object control, you know, is is a good thing. It really seems that there's a focus on product conformance, safety, and even the equipment used in manufacturing and even measuring. And that makes sense because of the criticality of all the things that are being made. It's not just for the end result. It's like, do you want to, as somebody who's building something, have to recall twice as many things because you don't have the traceability to know, okay, it was only in this batch. Oh, it could become expensive. Oh, yeah. Now, Bruce, what does AS9100-9120 provide? additional value to aerospace companies beyond the basic requirements. So we talked a little bit about safety and, and all of that, but what's the additional value? Probably one of the big ones is just establishing that culture. When you get right down to it, you know, aircraft safety goes right down to the nuts and bolts, uh, rivets, everything. So, so we can't, we can't say that, you know, just the engine's important, each, each individual piece in there. So, so there's so many, there's so many companies that contribute to the manufacture of aircraft and included in this, you know, are things like NASA, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's aerospace. So it's not just aero planes. Yeah. So it's pretty broad. It's pretty broad. Well, for a lot of companies, they make a product that could be used outside of aerospace. So when they open up the aerospace market by getting the required AS9100 certification, they could double their business for, you know, they, they, they could right. greatly increase the bottom line. And part of that is the fact that there is a, a, a database called OASIS, which has, uh, which lists all the certified AS9100, 9120 companies. This makes you visible to anybody looking for, for items that you may produce. It also gives the members visibility to any problems that AS companies have. If they fail a certification, if they have non-conformances, all this stuff is out there for the world to see. So if you're a great company, it's a, it's a huge advantage. Yeah. If um, you're not doing so good, well, uh, it gives everybody else a chance to, to see where the, um, where the problems are. Right. It's essentially a, a, an approved supplier list of, for aerospace vendors. And as Bruce mentioned, it can, it can also highlight or make visible the not so good suppliers out there who mm-hmm. are having quality escapes. It's really good that there's a, a tool out here that you can use if you're looking for an aerospace provider or supplier. Mm-hmm. Going back a step, I know Bruce said something about, you know, it's not just airplanes. Our internet's satellite-based. Whether you like them or not, Elon Musk and the whole, you know, putting all of these satellites. And think about the price of that. If if, if something fails as you're launching a satellite, I mean, we we saw that with the Hubble years and years ago. Get up there and the thing's out of focus, you know, because (laughs) something wasn't done right. So that is really critical when you're dealing with that beyond just the safety, but I mean, the amount of expense some of these things can be too. Yeah. So basically you got both positive and negative when it comes to uh, the value. You get an Oasis and if you've got a good track record, great. If not, you're still able to see ones that maybe you don't want to work with. And and that that certainly could be a, a good thing that you don't get hooked up with somebody who's not taking care of the things they should be. Shows the company's accountability or lack thereof when it comes to that. But do either one of you have any stories, uh, or both of you, where aerospace is really, they've gotten into AS 9100, 9120, and it's really helped grow their company? Yeah, I I have. And some of my ex-colleagues would probably laugh about this, but I always talked about the good product realization process, right? Mm -hmm. There is a company that I had worked for or were associated with in my past that uh, there was there was a product that was supposed to be made out of one alloy and it was made out of a different alloy. Mm-hmm. We reviewed purchase order. 
the wrong material specification was entered into the system. It was ordered wrong. It was made wrong. It was shipped wrong. And mm. by the time you knew it, legal had to get involved and there was accruals that we had to do in order to cover ourselves. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, the material we used was a different higher tensile strength and <laughs> higher strength of material than the material it was supposed to be made out of. But, you know, when we got down to the root cause, it's it was the process. I mm -hmm. mean, we had a contract review process that depended on one person. And if that one person made a mistake... Which right? humans do. Which humans do. Mm -hmm. There was no oversight to validate. So we wound up having a quality engineering systematic check that if the materials didn't match, it wouldn't allow you to place a purchase order. And mm. that was our permanent fix. But it was, there were parts in the sky and, uh, you know, thankfully... It wasn't a that um, negative of an outcome, yeah. but it gave them a chance to learn and absolutely. Do the, and, do it right. and, and and for me, it was a big learning experience in terms of how robust a contract review process needs to mm -hmm. be when it comes down to critical characteristics that mm -hmm. are on your blueprints or on your customer purchase orders. Mm -hmm. Bruce, do you have anything? Well, I don't know of any AS certifications that haven't resulted in more business for the companies. That's that's the whole point of getting into it. But I do have an interesting story. Okay. One of the companies I worked with made, um, of course, everybody that goes on airplanes now uses the air, airplane Wi-Fi, right, to watch right. movies and whatever. So these guys make the uh, the antenna that collects the Wi-Fi signal on the aircraft. When I was driving up to the place, I saw an interesting structure out in front of their building. And came to find out that what they would do is uh, to test these items, they would build the, the pod that holds the, the antenna. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a structure that sits outside the plane and fire frozen turkeys against it at like <laughs> five or six hundred miles an hour to see if it held up or not. They also use, you know, frozen. Well, they I think they thaw them first, but they shoot mm -hmm. turkeys they at, at, <laughs> at, at aircraft windshields and such to test them. But I actually got to see the mechanism. So that that was kind of interesting to me. That yeah. is I never got yeah. to see a, I never got yeah. to see a turkey shoot. But, yeah, but it was cool to see, just to see the the um, yeah I have the structure I to, and everything. I was blessed enough to work for an OEM and saw the uh, went to maintenance classes for for engines and saw some of that testing going on and it, it is really really neat to see. But if there is it ever an aha moment, you know, when you go through that experience. The aha moment is when you realize, wow, yeah. there's so much that goes into this and so much reliability on yeah. people's ethical, their, their quality management systems. Yeah. Do it right. It does show the importance of it and, and also why to make sure you can meet all those requirements that are more stringent, but also why they're so stringent. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is great. I really do appreciate you both talking to me today. You know, I think this has been really valuable for some of our customers who may be considering venturing into the AS realm, uh, or maybe they aren't certified yet and they need to be. This yeah. gives them some things they got to think about. Really appreciate you both being here. Thank you, X. My pleasure. Hope we were helpful. Absolutely. And I want to thank everyone who's listened to our podcast today. We hope that it's been informative for you. Now, if you haven't already followed us on your favorite podcast platform, be sure to do so. And that way you won't miss the next Quality Hub podcast when it's released next week. Thanks again. and Have a great day. 